Well, here we are. Um, I'm back in the school actually uh, today in a very uh, wet, rainy day in, um, well, early winter, late autumn. It's a job here that we've been meaning to do for a while, and that is to sow uh, some seeds from the Devil's Bit Scabious, um, this uh, less common uh, wildflower here in the UK. Uh, of, um, of this scabious that has this um, lovely kind of sky blue clusters of flowers uh, in the um, in the autumn and the the reason we started growing it we were approached um, I've got a plant here actually or there's more than one plant in here I think underneath those leaves a nice little clump of plants we were approached a few years back um, by um, the uh, local authority here in uh, Rhonda Cunnantaf um, who explained that there was a problem with um, a, a particular butterfly, a beautiful butterfly, um, the marsh fritillary. Uh, and the reason that this, um, this butterfly had become endangered was because the host plant, the plant that it loves to eat and to live around, um, this um, uh, devil's bit scabious, had become uh, less and less common. You just didn't see it around because of modern farming practices and so on. And because this plant, this host plant, was becoming less and less common, so was the butterfly. So um, they took us to a patch um, that was known to be grown in the wild and they encouraged us to, to pick a few um, of the, um, the seed heads um, just as they were going over. And I think they approached a few schools um, with the idea that the schools could could grow these plants from these tiny little um, clusters of seeds. I've just got one little cluster there between my uh, my finger and thumb. Um, and uh, all we had to do was, let's see if I can pull this off here. Oh, there we go. Take away the dead flower, which contains the seeds. And we just do it very, very simply. We drop it into um, some some compost there. And I've got more here that we, we collected um, earlier in the year. And as you can see, it's not particularly precise here. We're trying to mimic nature. And nature doesn't always do things in even numbers and straight rows. Um, so we just started doing this every every autumn. And lo and behold, we, <laughs> uh, uh, we succeeded. And we've, since then, we've been producing well, up to well, between 50 and 100 plants every, every year. And uh, just by doing this in the autumn and uh, scattering the seeds, oh, I think I've exhausted that. Let's get some more. This um, this compost that we use, because it's a, a wild a wild flower that grows in fairly poor kind of meadow soils in its normal habitat, damp soil as well. It's quite happy in. Um, with this, this this compost is old compost that we've used for our potatoes actually and tomatoes in the um, in the summer here at the school so it's been pretty much exhausted of its um, of its nutrients um, but that suits our, our needs and it's you know means it's not going to waste mind you if we didn't use it for this we put it on the compost heap or in the garden so it never goes to waste here of course um, but it means that we can use it. it's ideal for this um, this purpose of trying to mimic the um, the conditions that this um, this lovely flower enjoys, and as you can see, I'm putting quite a few seeds in here, um, clusters of seeds really, and um, um, maybe maybe there might be I don't know between five and ten seeds um, within each of these little cells, maybe more, um, if only two or three of each of those seeds uh, comes up that will be fine and what we end up then is a little clump of seedlings in the spring and uh, what we'll do is we'll um, we're going to pop these outside in a minute um, put them outside in the rain and um, I'm going to cover them with some compost and then normally around about kind of April time we normally see two or three little seedlings coming up in each of these um, these little cells we let them grow on a bit um, through the spring then we pop them up into larger pots like this so here's one we made earlier this is one from uh, from last year and um, we managed to get the uh, the flower heads off uh, these there's one or two still left on there the uh, the seed heads there 
uh, we're going to plant these out actually we've got a, a, a customer that wants to create a little wildflower garden they've got the perfect soil for them so we've got a few of those that the children here at the school are going to go and plant out to keep on increasing the population of these um, of these lovely uh, lovely flowers so just to finish this off I'm going to grab some more of this uh, this old compost from over here and just lightly scatter some compost over the top of there just so that they're protected a little bit but you know it's not so much from the weather it's more kind of to do with uh, insects and other animals that might come along and um, have a go at the seeds so I'll just take it over there I need a bit more a uh, bit more compost so it's just a light covering there so that the the seedlings can easily make their way up through there we are that's all there is to it so I'm going to put a label in there um, so when those little seedlings come up in the spring um, we and the pupils know what we've got there I can see some that are a little bit exposed just there so there we are, that's step one to um, doing our bit to look after the um, Devil's Bit Scabious and uh, equally importantly that beautiful Marsh Fritillary. Um, I don't find that easy to say. Marsh Fritillary. There we are. Um, and we'll keep you updated next spring, see how they come up. Bye. Um, in the words of Colombo, uh, just, just one more thing. Um, if you like the idea of growing these uh, these flowers and helping these butterflies and you want some seed uh, contact me I guess probably the best thing to do would contact me via the um, my, my YouTube channel in the comments box there let me know um, and we can get in touch and uh, the school might be able to uh, send you some of our um, homegrown uh, uh, seed here hope that helps okay thanks bye so here we are the next step in our a kind of annual cycle of uh, production of the devil's bit um, scabious this um, much sought after plant by the um, delightful but slightly endangered marsh fritillary butterfly um, so we've got our um, our seeds that we um, we planted back in the um, ooh, when was it it was back in the autumn um, when we uh, when we first uh, in early winter when we first uh, picked the, um, the dead flower heads and scattered the seeds in these packs we've got probably <laughs> a few more than we would have expected we've had a good germination uh, from these and there was an argument for perhaps trying to divide these um, clumps of seedlings but we've left them a bit too long so they're all rooted in together so we're just going to put them in as one clump into this um, this compost which actually <laughs> um, is old um, spent potato compost and there there is um, I just spotted residing in the compost a little kind of reject potato there so he can go to the side there have that for tea um, so the reason we use this is that um, the uh, the kind of ecology department from the local authority who who got us started on this a few years ago thank you um, Ronda Kanantath um, Council for getting us started on this they gave us some instructions and they were saying that these you know it basically it's a wild a wildflower and it survives in fairly poor um, soil kind of meadowy soil wouldn't have much in the way of nutrients in it so um, to, to try and mimic the natural growing conditions rather than using nutrient rich kind of compost fresh from a, from a bag they, they suggested using um, compost that had been used for something else previously um, and this is our old potato compost from where we've grown potatoes in the bags in the school um, so it's still good for potting but it hasn't got much in the way of nutrients we're going to put our little clump of seedlings in there give a little shake as we go there we are my little beauties you can see there's all sorts of debris in this in this compost from I've literally just an hour or two ago emptied out the last of our potatoes uh, from the uh, the school the school project so there we go and then what we're going to do is uh, put in outside i'm going to put them in the shade initially um here's the rest of the seedlings you see we've got quite a few to uh, to uh, to pot up um 
I'm going to leave the potted ones alongside there. They get a bit of shade here, they get a bit of light, but uh, during this heat wave, which we're enjoying at the moment, they're not going to get too stressed. We'll just leave them there for a month or two to kind of settle in um, into their new home. Uh, and then we'll look probably next spring to plant those out somewhere in the, uh, the South Wales area. We've got little kind of projects going, springing up all over the place where we've got them um, starting to naturalise. And we've actually got some now in the school grounds that have somehow managed to uh, um, uh, you know, find their way and growing in the um, growing in the ground. I don't know if you can see there. Let's just change the camera setting here. Um, uh, well, it's a lovely, attractive kind of meadow flower, um, and it's the um, the only real um, food source for uh, this delightful butterfly. So we're trying to get as many of these naturalised in gardens um, and in and other areas um, uh, wherever we can find a space really to get some of these growing and reseeding and um, reproducing so that um, this plant can thrive in the conditions in South Wales and uh, that means hopefully then that the butterfly can also thrive quite easy to grow once you know how any questions comments ideas if you'd like some seed um, let us know via uh, my YouTube channel here and I'm sure through the school we can get something, uh, something organised if you're in the UK. Thanks very much.